In this video, we'll be discussing topics from Pierce Genetics chapters 16.1 and 16.2 over gene regulation, specifically in prokaryotes. We'll cover operons and a few examples. Regulation of gene expression may start at the compact level of DNA, where DNA is highly condensed. When DNA is relaxed, there is another level of regulation that will happen here. From this relaxed DNA to transcription, there's another type of regulation that happens here, which we'll focus on in chapter 16. After transcription in eukaryotes, we have post-transcriptional processing, where we get mature mRNA. And then we also have translational regulation and post-translational modifications. So there's a whole host of different levels of regulation that we can have over genes. However, in chapter 16, we will specifically be focusing on transcriptional control in prokaryotes. Now let's look at the structure of an operon. Within an operon, we have three different things. We have a regulatory gene, we have structural genes, and we have regulatory elements. A regulatory gene is a gene that is generally upstream from an operon and is gonna produce a regulatory protein that binds to the operator, which will either increase or decrease the transcription of a given set of structural genes. A structural gene is a gene that encodes for proteins or enzymes of a metabolic pathway in a prokaryotic cell. In addition to these structural and regulatory genes, we also have something called a regulatory element. We have two types of regulatory elements. We can have cis-acting and we can have trans-acting regulatory elements, such as a regulatory protein may be produced at one site it may bind to an operator. However, other regulatory elements such as the operator or the promoter are considered cis-acting because they are directly associated with the gene that they are encoding. The concept of cis and trans-acting regulatory elements will be something that will be discussed further in a video over partial diploid mutations. Before we discuss the operon further, let's clarify some terminology. If we talk about positive control, that means that the regulatory protein is an activator, so it's going to activate transcription. If we're talking about negative control, that means that we have a repressor protein, so we're going to be inhibiting transcription. So negative control means that we are inhibiting transcription. So if we have a negative inducible operon, that means that we have a repressor protein because it's negative, and it also means that our operon is off to start with because it's inducible. So, we can ask ourselves, is our protein on or is it off? Well, our regulatory protein is gonna start on, which means because we have an active regulator protein and it is a negative repressible operon, this repressor protein will bind to the regulatory element or the operator and will prevent RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter, which is going to inhibit transcription. Transcription will be inhibited until a molecule called an inducer binds to our regulatory protein. When it binds to this regulatory protein, it's gonna change the shape of it which is gonna change the DNA binding motif, which is gonna make this protein unable to bind to the operator, which will make it fall off, and it'll leave the promoter open for RNA polymerase to bind, which is gonna allow us to undergo transcription. Our next type of operon is a negative repressible operon. Because it's a negative operon, we know that our regulatory protein is a repressor protein, and because it's repressible, we know that we are starting with transcription on, which means that if we have a repressor protein, our repressor protein must be in the off configuration or unable to bind to the operator at the moment. So that means that we have to have another molecule called a co-repressor, which will bind to our regulatory protein. When the co-repressor binds to the regulatory protein in a negative repressible operon, it's gonna change the shape of that protein's DNA binding motif, which will allow it to bind to the operator, and that will allow it to repress transcription. So thus we have a negative repressible relationship right here because we have a regulatory protein that starts in an inactive configuration that is activated by a co-repressor to turn off transcription. Now we're gonna discuss the positive inducible operon. And it is important to note that while in nature, it is fairly rare to find positive control, there is one in a later section that we will be discussing. A positive inducible operon has an activator protein which is going to start in an inactive configuration and thus our operon will be off when we start. So we have a regulatory protein who cannot bind to the operator and because it cannot bind, it cannot activate transcription. And because it cannot activate transcription, transcription is not gonna occur. It may be actually occurring at a very low level, but for the purpose of this course, we're gonna say it's not occurring at all. But when we have a molecule come in called an inducer, the inducer is gonna bind to this molecule and it's gonna change it into an active configuration and this activated regulatory molecule is gonna be able to bind to the operator, it's gonna be able to activate transcription. So notice that this is different than negative inducible because instead of repressing transcription, we're actually turning transcription on. The last type of operon to talk about is a positive repressible operon. 
Again, because this is positive control, our protein is an activator protein. And because this is repressible, we're going to start with the operon turned on. So that means we're going to be doing transcription. We're going to be creating our structural genes. However, we're going to have a molecule called a co-repressor. And when the co-repressor binds to our active regulatory molecule, it's going to change the configuration of it and make it leave the operator. So again, let's look at the difference between our negative and our positive control. In all instances, negative and positive control are going to refer to whether the regulatory molecule is going to be a repressor or an activator. So a negative inducible, a repressor protein is going to be bound to the operator until an inducer comes and changes its shape and makes it fall off, turning transcription on or inducing it. However, in positive inducible, we have an activator protein who starts inactive. And the binding of an inducer to this activator protein is going to make it bind to the operator, which is going to turn on transcription. With a negative repressible operon, we start with a regulatory protein that is turned off and an operon that is actively undergoing transcription. However, when a repressor, which is generally an end product of the pathway, binds to that repressor protein, its configuration is changed so it can bind to the operator and inhibit transcription, thus it is negative. However, with a positive repressible operon, our regulatory molecule is an activator and it starts active. So our active activator is activating transcription, a lot of activation. However, a co-repressor, which again is generally going to be an end product of a repressible pathway, when that comes and binds to our activator protein, it's going to change the configuration of it, it's going to change its affinity for the DNA, so it's going to unbind from the DNA and it's going to decrease transcription. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.